welcome to Therapist Spotlight. Hello everybody and welcome to Angie's Therapist Spotlight, the podcast where we aim to showcase our wonderful members to the wider community. I'm your host Joshua Brooks and with us tonight is our lovely Lynn Riedel. Lynn is a naturopath and a practitioner mentor, so this is going to be a fantastic conversation. How are you tonight, Lynn? Yeah, really good, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, no worries. So, first question, how did you get into natural medicine? Well, uh, basically I had midlife crisis. Oh, right. So, um, I used to work in a pathology uh, lab for about 25 years. Um, never really enjoyed it, fell into it from school. Um, and then once you have your children and, you know, that just becomes easier to keep doing what you're doing. But uh, my body had other ideas for me. So basically I was really struggling with anxiety and depression at that stage in my life. Um, I went off to have some counselling. I did a Myers-Briggs test. And the result of that was um, the preferred profession for me was healer. Mm. So that that was just, it just resonated so much with my heart uh, because my favourite thing about working in the lab was getting alongside people and hearing about their stories. Um, so I made the move, took the plunge, did all the study. I already had all the, the science background. So um, yeah, but moved first of all into uh, hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. and psychotherapy yeah wow realized that uh, i wasn't going to be able to make a living with that and so because i had all the science background uh, i completed my studies for naturopathy and so i was able to combine all those three things uh, in practice so i've been doing it for 22 years now oh far out that's good yeah awesome yeah yeah lots, best lots move i ever made uh, I absolutely love what I do. It's such a privilege to do this work. So when you were saying you got into pathology testing, what, what sort of qualifications did you get? Were you a nurse first yeah. or was it just a like a lab tech? Did you do a science degree? Yeah, like what was that? Yeah, lab tests, yeah. So, yeah, cool. Yeah, so just doing routine pathology tests, so working in all areas, so haematology, biochemistry, microbiology, blood transfusion serology. I even worked in the forensic lab for a little while. Yeah, wow. So that would have really um, um, so, given you a great basis for naturopath naturopathic testing then, wouldn't it? So you can tell all blood oh, levels, absolutely. serum levels, everything like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I had a really good un understanding of the pathology. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, adding in the naturopathic qualifications as well, it, just allows you to, as we know, to look at the whole person and uh, just kind of move away from that strict medical model of something's wrong. What are we going to, what drug are we going to use to treat it with? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I guess it was the most wonderful thing for me to, to also go through that midlife crisis. Uh, I learned so much about how not to do that to myself, uh, become mm -hmm. depressed and anxious. Uh, so once I mastered those skills, I was then able to translate that into helping my clients to yeah, sure. um, yeah. deal with all that. Yeah. Yeah. So with with that, then how does that um, inscribe into your naturopathic practice? Are you a huge tester? Like, so say if I came to you with for a consultation, are you looking for test results first or do you prefer to take like the whole picture and we'll start with your diet and we'll break it and then if we need test results later we'll get them how does your consultation process and how do you approach a new client normally yeah um i hardly do any testing yep um <laughs> so i've moved right away from that model um, yeah i think you can i tried to keep my practice really simple so over the years i've just learned by experience that if you get people to eat well and you get them to think well the body transforms itself yeah. so you put junk into your body you can't expect to have anything else but a junky body so just so important to teach people and get them to understand that 
the food you eat literally becomes your body. So you eat a banana and the banana becomes your body. Put a lot of crap into your body, that literally becomes your body. Mm. So um, in regards to testing, I, I do minimal testing. I really like to see how people are when they first come, mm -hmm. put them on a program of just getting to eat really good, fresh food, help them to manage their stress, give them some really good strategies for that. And honestly, the transformation is just remarkable and quick. Mm. Uh, if there's some lingering things going on, then I might do some testing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't go chasing after biochemistry because yeah. I think the, yeah. the intelligence in the body is such that you give it the right fuel uh, and, and the right energetic, so energetics of calm and peace. Mm -hmm. it, it just naturally knows how to bring itself back into balance. And so with your practice then, are you a big herbal user? Do you provide many supplements or nutrients or anything like that? How does that work in your ethos? Yeah, so look, when, when people come first come, I get them to fill out a health assessment questionnaire. And over time, you, you get to understand, you know, the symptoms that people are presenting with, um, you know, what nutrients they're, they're likely to be low in. So, you know, the common things are magnesium's huge. Um, <laughs> most course. people are low in magnesium. Zinc's another one. Mm. Usually you just give people magnesium and zinc. They feel a whole lot better really quickly. Um, it, herbs I find really useful for bringing, mm. uh, particularly for hormone balance and for, you know, really chronic stress. So the herbs that are available to naturopaths for calming the adrenal system are just absolutely beautiful uh, and you know the doctors don't have anything any of those uh, you know tools in their kit for people um, so it's either antidepressants or that's really their, their tool for stress so the herbs are beautiful at just bringing the, the body back into that natural balance but, but truly, I, I, I don't like taking supplements myself. I, mm -hmm. I'm a really bad naturopath because I don't take anything. <laughs> Never have. <laughs> I'm really healthy. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would make you a really good naturopath, uh, wouldn't it, if you're really healthy? I hope so. <laughs> yes. right. Well, there's, so there's a question. Often... There's a question I like to ask Sorry, a lot of the naturopaths. Yeah. What is your favourite herb? I know it's a tough one. Um, look, I uh, the, can I name products or sure, uh, yeah. so the, yeah. So look, uh, the, there's one that I use a lot of. It's mm -hmm. it's called Neverton. It's a many herb product, and it's got yeah. a beautiful combination of four herbs in it. So John's Wort, which oh, you know is, is that beautiful natural antidepressant, but also some other calming herbs as well. So I find that just such a beautiful combination for yeah. helping to break that cycle of stress and anxiety and you know depression that a lot of people are caught in. Mm -hmm. um, but because the beautiful thing about herbs is you don't have to wean on them, you don't have to wean off them. You know the you don't, you don't have terrible side effects with them. So mm. that's probably the one that I use most often uh, as a herbal formula with people. Yeah, wonderful. And so then with your mindset training and with your hypnotherapy that you started into, do you, do you try and bring that quite thoroughly into your practice when you're, when you're dealing with clients? <laughs> Well, um, not so much hypnotherapy these days, mm. but w what I did do about uh, 15 years ago, I suppose, was that I started studying Eastern philosophy. And I did it through a school called the School of Practical Philosophy. And that was one of the best things that I ever did personally um, because it, it, it opens up this whole wisdom tradition to me. Mm. And because it was practical philosophy, um, the way it worked was that we were presented with an idea and then we would put that into practice for the week and just see what happened with us. So I did that for about 15 years and I ended up tutoring small groups uh, in that style of, it's, it's like self-examination really, you know, learning to what, watch what runs in the mind mm -hmm. and just really how we torment ourselves 
and and it gave me the practical tools to change my mindset about things. So because I practice, I still practice it all the time, um, but because I've got such a big grounding in that, I, I'm able to talk to my patients about that uh, very easily and just give people really simple things that they can that they can do uh, to not change the situations in their lives but to start seeing them differently mm. so for example I just saw someone before we uh, came on this podcast and she was quite stressed about a situation with a, a person in her family and just worrying about her all the time and her stress levels were through the roof. So I just spoke to her about the, the importance of just being where you are mm -hmm. in your life. And so just gave her this little tool that, um, you know, when you're with someone, be with them. And when you're not with them, don't be with them anymore. So uh, she, when she came in today, she said, ah, oh, that was fantastic. I feel so much better. You know, I saw this person on the weekend and stressful while she was with her. But as soon as she left, she left her behind. Mm. Didn't drag all that worry and stress with her into her life. So just really simple things like that, um, tools to help people notice what their mind is doing and to just keep bringing themselves back to the present moment. Mm. So you can probably get a, a hint that the way I like going about things is I really like to keep things as simple as possible with as little intervention as possible. I mean, the KISS principle I've been taught since I was a kid, so it's <laughs> I think it's quite, yeah. Yeah. Generally is the easiest way. Like, yeah. And that is such the Eastern philosophy too, isn't it? Just simple, nice, Absolutely. down to earth. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And uh, so much of it um, uh, uh, is around just learning to be present in your life, learning to be here and now, watching the mind when it's running riot, you know, when it's dwelling on stuff in the past or whether it's projecting things that might happen in the future. That's what does so much damage with people um, because whatever the mind dwells on seems it has an effect on the physical body. Yes. So if you're dreaming up a scary scenario of something that might happen tomorrow or next week, your body thinks you're under threat, so it releases all the stress hormones, so you feel anxious. Uh, and all you have to do is just turn your mind away from those thoughts, come back to the present moment, be with the breath, three breaths, that's all it takes. Uh, and then you're now, and the whole system just calms down. Yeah, wonderful. So... Just such a simple tool, just, just a matter of encouraging people to to use it. Um, everyone loves it. You know, when, once you have a taste of how simple and effective that is, yeah, <laughs> so sure. many things in your life can change. And so your other part of your business that you were saying is your practitioner training. So what's that yeah. entail and what, and yeah, what, what, what do you look at for that and what do you try and teach practitioners? Um, so really, um, I like to mentor practitioners um, with mindset mastery, really. Um, so, you know, these days everyone talks about mindfulness. My experience is everyone talks about it and nobody practices it. So yes. <laughs> people are always saying, you know, you should do mindfulness, but they're not doing it themselves. And I guess my interactions with, practitioners in business groups uh, that I've been in, I've just noticed that they're all stressed as well. Mm. <laughs> so, um, you know, so the, the goal with all of that is to really teach the people, the, uh, teach practitioners the skills of uh, just really finding peace and happiness in their life. Mm. That if they practice that enough, then they can teach their clients so that it, it comes from this position of walking the talk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rather than getting people to do things that you're not doing themselves. And it's one of my favourite sayings from, I mean, I'm going to butcher his name and I apologise to everybody out there. I don't mean to, but Thich Nhat Tian, yeah. the, the Buddhist, where he says, you know, drink your yeah. tea as if the whole world revolves around it. You know, so everything yeah. that you do just become so mindful and try and make sure that all your intentions yeah. 
it's like yeah, yeah so obviously a practice you know and i haven't mastered it yet but yeah just making yeah. sure that everything you do is with intention and that you're just constantly focusing and drawing yourself down yeah. and sitting in that silence yes yeah so important um so you know with all these things um that's a great idea but mm. doesn't have any power if it stays at the level of being an idea yeah so you put it into practice and wow your whole life can transform mm. and so do you find that because you, you practice and cultivate that within yourself if you've got a client who may be running in and is just great like everything's going through her head once she sees your calmness it starts to resonate with them and then they calm down and then you can start to engage a little yeah. bit more. Um, absolutely. absolutely so you know when you're calm yourself you you admit that you emit an energy so you know what it's like when you're being with someone who's highly stressed you know you, you pick up on that vibe yourself so one of, one of the things i often do with people is i just say to them shall we pause so actually just get them to be in the chair, mm. uh, close their eyes, put their attention on the breath, you know, a few deep, uh, deeper than normal in inhalations through the nose, exhale through the mouth, make a mm. sound, and there they are. They're present. Everything that they dragged into the room has gone, and then they're open to kind of listening to yeah. what needs to be said. And I guess it's one of the hardest things with our current lifestyle, giving ourselves that time to really make ourselves a priority in what we need in our life and how we want to heal and how we move forward and, you know, really yeah. you know, not bringing everything out but just having that space to actually focus on, well, well what do we need? What do I yeah, need so what do I to move forward? Yeah. Yeah, it's one thing that uh, people don't have in their lives at the moment is space. Mm. So we have lots and lots of activity. You know, you, you say to people, how are you? Oh, really busy, as mm. if that's a good thing. Mm. Um, so people, you know, um, swing between loads of activity and then can't do anything. And there's nothing of just calm spaciousness anywhere in between so I, I often talk to people about this this thing called the gooners i don't know whether, whether you want to hear about this in this sure. podcast but it comes out of eastern philosophy so basically what what it says is that the whole of the cosmos is, is uh, driven by only three forces so one is called rajas rajas is a force of movement it's a creative force Another one is a dissolving force that's called tamas. Mm -hmm. And there's another one called sattva, which is a sustaining force. So if you think of a flower growing, um, the force of rajas causes the cells to divide. So the stem grows and then the flower grows. And then, so that's the force of rajas do that. It brings something into being. And then the flower hangs around for a little while and everyone admires it and sees its beauty. And that's the force of sattva that, that you see. And then the flower will dissolve and go back to the, the earth. And that's the force of tamas. So if you think of everything that goes on in the cosmos, it's just those three forces at work. You know, day and night, there's a movement of the planets. The light appears. It hangs around for a while and then it dissolves into night. Mm -hmm. um, your body, you know, you appear, mm -hmm. you hang around for a while and eventually you will dissolve. Yeah. Your thoughts, there's a movement, the thought hangs around for a microsecond and then it fades away. So it's just those three forces. And in the whole of nature, that, that's just in a beautiful balance, but not in human beings. So human beings are full of rajas do, 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 think, 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 mind never stops, you know, the body never stops. And they're full of tamas. So tamas is when they're collapsing, dissolving. But there's yeah. no sattva. Mm. Uh, and that's when you start bringing sattva into your life, everything changes. 
So um, that's what happens when you're present. You get this burst of sattva and you can literally feel it in your body. The whole yeah. body just relaxes. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of a, I find nobody's ever heard of that before, but people get it. They understand mm. that. So, yeah, you know, yeah. it's a real encouragement for people to put these simple practices of, of being present, being with the breath, uh, just to do it regularly throughout the day. So I've actually started a, a thing that I call Project Pause. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've got a list of, on my phone of all my patients that want to be in this. Um, so whenever I pause during the day, and I do that maybe seven or eight times during the day, just stop, full still, few conscious breaths, that's a pause. So I just send a little message out to everyone as a reminder for them to pause as well. Yeah, wonderful. Because uh, it's so easy to forget to do it. Mm. Um, but the benefits of doing that just quite profound. And I also see on your website that you offer retreats. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just recently like started doing that. Um, so um, I meditate myself twice a day. I've been doing that for about 15 years now. Um, and I do yoga four or five times a week as well. Um, so I've, I've teed up with a friend of mine who's a yoga teacher and so we offer these they're quite boutique -y little retreats so we've got one coming up in june we've got 13 people going yeah. to it um cool. but basically we just take people away for a weekend we do yoga twice a day we teach people simple meditation practices we we do some practical mindfulness sessions um feed them beautiful nourishing food we do all the cooking ourselves um and just to see the difference between people when they come in on Friday night with all their rajas uh, mm -hmm. and how they float out on Sunday afternoon, it's just absolutely beautiful to see. Well, so beautiful. We're just in an element doing that. It's just such a beautiful yeah. thing to do. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your wonderful self with us. Where can people find you? And Okay, so I've got a website, um, so it's just lynnreedall.com.au. Um, so that's that's got my phone number on there. Um, so I prefer people just to call me on the mobile. That's much easier. We can have a bit of a chat before they make an appointment. Yep. Um, so yep. that that and also through the website, they can send me an email mm -hmm. as well. And so do you only do virtual consults or are you doing in-person consults? I mainly do in-person consults, yep. but very happy to do virtual consults with, well, I've got clients all over Australia. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. And where, whereabouts is your clinic in terms of Australia? Uh, so I'm in Adelaide. Oh, yeah, yeah. wonderful. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, in a suburb called Gilberton, which is about five minutes from the city centre. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I've been in the same clinic for 20 odd years now. Beautiful. Well, anybody yeah. out there that seems to be interested in getting some mindfulness training and a little bit of naturopathy, please check out Lynn's website and book in for a consultation. Lynn, we'd just like yeah. to say thank you so much for coming on Therapist Spotlight tonight. Oh, that's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's been beautiful. For everyone out there, have a good night and we'll catch you the next time. See ya. Thank you for listening to Therapist Spotlight. If you would like to know more about ANTA, visit us at www.anta.com.au.